Hello, this is Fiscal Rascal. I'm back here to uh, explain today about uh, the pressure pot system all by itself and everything that I've learned about this one here. So hopefully this was useful for some other people that are uh, learning about resin casting because I couldn't find any resources online for that pretty much anywhere. So this will have hopefully everything in there, but then feel free to ask any questions if there's anything else that I left out. So uh, I'm going to talk about the air compressor, which is on the left and the pressure pot, which is on the right. Uh, this on the left here, uh, this is a air compressor. Uh, this is made by a quarter cable. Uh, this one's 150 PSI, which is plenty for what we need. Uh, it's got two gauges on the front. Uh, the one on the left is the one uh, that explains how much is in the tank, and uh, you can bring this up to whatever you want, uh, as long as it's 150 or below. Uh, and I usually bring it up to about 90. All right, uh, I never uh, fill up the pressure pot to 90, but I will for this piece here. All right, and then on the right, it has a regulated uh, pressure. This means what's going to be coming out of the air hose. All right, uh, the air hose doesn't come with the system, so you're going to have to purchase this separately, as well as a couple other pieces, which I'll explain in a moment here. All right, uh, but what you do is uh, you turn this on right here. It makes a lot of racket, and uh, you let it run for about 30 to 45 seconds, and then that'll fill up to uh, whatever you need it to and uh, then you turn it off at that point. All right, uh, the other thing to know about this unit, uh, or two things, one, uh, assuming you've never used these before, these are uh, quick connect uh, right here. So I'm going to disconnect this for a moment just to show you how it works. So I'm trying to do this off camera just a little bit here. So you can see what that is, but the idea behind this, let's see if this focuses here, is uh, this is a quick connector. You pull down on the sleeve right here, and then the piece goes in there, and then uh, you push it in, and then you let go, and it connects. So now it's nice and secure. Whenever you need to remove it, you just pull on it again, and then it pops right out, just like what you saw in here. So I'm going to take this and connect it to uh, one of these connectors here. I can show you here on the front, uh, it actually has two outputs. You can use either one for it. Uh, I just used the one on the front, but this is all personal preference for which one you want to use. So I pull back on the sleeve like this, put it in there, and then click, and then it's connected. So now when I hook this up to the other side here for the pressure pot, then uh, that's going to uh, start to fill this up with pressure. All right, uh, other than that, here's a dial that you can use. You can turn it one way or the other, and that's going to control your regulated pressure. Uh, see, the, the only other thing that you need to know about this is as uh, the tank starts to fill up, it collects the humidity in the atmosphere as well. And so uh, it'll create condensation inside the tank, which could cause it to rust later. So whenever you need to release the pressure out of here, there's a little nozzle down here below, and hopefully this is showing up on camera, but that's this right here. If you twist this uh, just a little bit, it starts to let out air. All right, and then if you tip it over this way, let any kind of condensation drip out from the bottom. Let's see. Uh, other than that, uh, I have this on a rubber mat. Uh, I have some old gym mats in here, so I just used one of these pieces right there because this does vibrate a little bit as it's running. I've noticed that uh, it does have rubber feet on there, but this was starting to kind of jiggle its way all around in the garage here, so that's why uh, I've got it on this mat here, so it'll stay in one place. Okay. And now for the next part, I'm going to move over slightly to the pressure pot system. So uh, this is the one by uh, TCP Global. Uh, it's a two and a half gallon. And this uh, can support up to 90 PSI. You don't need 90. Uh, in fact, I usually run at about 40 PSI when I fill this up uh, and uh, it seems to work beautifully. So uh, you can choose what you want, but I would recommend uh, going, making sure that you stay below the maximum rated, which in this case is 90 PSI. So. Uh, it's almost half. All right, and so now we can talk about a couple of the pieces that are on here. So uh, this is the uh, regulator that's on there. So uh, right here, uh, this is where the pressure gauge is. And uh, this will show you how much pressure is in there. This, uh, you can actually turn it one way or the other and it can control what the, the maximum amount of pressure is going to be in there. Uh, I have it uh, cranked up beyond that, and I like to manually shut it off just so I can have more control over it, but you're free to do that either way. Okay. Uh, there are multiple connectors on here. Uh, we have this one here. This one was designed as a paint outlet. I'll open this up in a second to show you. But, uh, 
This one is closed off. Uh, whenever uh, it's perpendicular to uh, whatever valve it is, that means that it's closed. That that's closed. This means that it's open, and this also means that it's closed. And then so this would be partially open. All right. Uh, so I like to leave this one off unless I'm draining. Uh, same thing with this here. It's called the air outlet cock. Uh, they're all nicely labeled. Uh, and with this one, you can uh, twist it open and air starts spraying out the top. So when I need to depressurize, I'll turn this one on, this one, as well as the ones on the top. Now uh, there's right here, this is another uh, one of the levers that you can use. So you can leave that closed. So with this here closed, this closed, and this closed, that means that it's a sealed unit. As soon as I start opening some of those up, that's when the pressure starts uh, coming out. You want to leave that open as you're filling this, uh, because otherwise it won't do anything as soon as you plug it in. Uh, same thing with this. Uh, when it comes from the factory, this is probably going to be closed, so make sure that you open this back up again. All right, uh, let's see. Other than that, these are the latches for it, so you put these on and you twist it there to close it up. All right, uh, but I'm going, I have them open right now for this so I can show you what the inside looks like. Now there's a couple pieces, a couple modifications I had to do to this in order to make it uh, a little bit more conducive to resin casting. One of them is uh, this, this metal piece right here. Uh, this is for the agitator. This uh, spins around in there. It's meant for the paint in the paint bucket that's inside. And uh, as it spins around, you want to mix up the paint. But we don't need that, so there's a little Allen wrench that you can open this up right here and then pull it all the way up. There's an Allen wrench right here on this one and then on the outside as well, right here. And so as soon as you loosen those, you can pull it up and then tighten it again. For this one, you can use a pipe wrench. Uh, I haven't done that yet, but I will be doing that shortly. And uh, this piece will still stay on for it. Okay. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to point out about this is there is a rubber gasket right here. If at any time this gets flipped around a little bit, it's not going to create a proper seal uh, with this piece right here, so it'll leak air. So you want to make sure that this is uh, all nice and flush all throughout. Let's see, uh, other than that, uh, that's about it for the pressure pot system. Uh, what I like to do is make sure that everything is staged and ready to go. So I'll have it exactly like this, where I have this one closed, this closed, this closed, this one open, and then uh, that way, as soon as they have something ready to go and put in here, then uh, you can hook everything up and pressurize it all as quickly as possible. The reason for that is because uh, the resins that I use uh, usually start curing and setting within uh, two to three minutes. So with the mixing time and the pouring and everything else, you have about 30 seconds to get it in here. So uh, time is of the essence. All right, uh, so with that in mind, I'm going to do a quick demonstration of what it looks like as we're doing this. Uh, I'm going to just pretend for right now that we've already uh, made a pour for something. So we have just a little piece like this. Let's, let's say that this is all covered up. So uh, as soon as it's ready, what I want to do is go open this up, put the piece in there. I like to put it off to one side so the metal uh, pole here doesn't uh, touch it or anything. And put it down here. And then we need to seal these up. And then uh, I like to do two at a time, just like this, uh, because that way it goes uh, a bit faster. Because as I mentioned before, time is of the essence. Okay, uh, and so I made sure that these are all tight. And I'll pressurize the air compressor here. So I take this, and you can hear that hissing going on right now. So this is pressurizing, so it's starting to go up and up and up. As soon as it gets to that point, I'll turn it off like that. And then uh, I can then remove this and the pressure is in there. If I were to not close this and remove this piece, it's going to spray the air out. It's not a huge deal. You can just go and plug that back in. It will probably be a little bit noisy though. So heads up on that one. Uh, now, as soon as everything's done, uh, you've waited a couple hours, however long you want. Uh, don't open these up first. Uh, the idea is you want to start releasing pressure slowly. So there's a little bit air coming out from here. So I like to open it up from here and then here. And then I like to open this one up. And then, so it's going to be spraying out from both of these. And then we can see that the pressure's starting to go down as well. Let's 
noisy. It starts to get more noisy. Okay, so this is fully open at this point, uh, so I like to leave this one open. I'll close this one back up again, and close this one back up again, and also close this one here. So only this one is open right now, so this is reset uh, for the next use as well. And then we can start removing or untwisting the clamps on either side. One thing that I've noticed with this, uh, I like to unscrew them evenly as well, uh, is if you just do one at a time, be careful not to just let it go because this thing slams down on the side and you can dent it and you know, it's, they're pretty heavy duty but I just don't want to damage it. All right, and then we do the same thing with these other two sides. And then pull that down. And same thing with this one here. And then pull that down. And then we can remove the top and then you can take your mold out. Which we'll take the mold out here. And then close that up, and then it's ready for the next use. All right, so uh, that's, that's something where I couldn't find documentation anywhere for it. Uh, I, I tried calling my TCP importer. They weren't able to help with this because they're for very specific uses. But uh, hopefully this is uh, enough information to get you going with it. Uh, if you have any other questions, please do let me know.